Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Sibelius top tips video. So you should know all of these little hacks and goodies for Sibelius uh, that'll help your workflow as a composer or a musician. And uh, these are intended for beginners or those who aren't really familiar with Sibelius as a program. So let's get started. I am going to open up Sibelius down here and bring it up to my second monitor. There we go. This is your quick start menu and there's a ton of templates here that you can choose from. Let's start with a blank one actually. I'll show you how to add instruments into your uh, score here. So on the right here you have document setup. Let's go ahead and click on change instruments. Now when we click on change instruments we have this whole menu here with a ton of instrument names and groups. So you have the woodwinds, brass, and all that stuff. If it doesn't look like this, you could be on all instruments. And these are literally every single possible instrument, pretty much ever. You don't need that though. So I go to common instruments for most of the stuff. If I need something really specific, I can just go to all instruments. I can search it up here. Like I can search up uh, like a glass harmonica. I don't know why I thought of that, but I did. But we don't need a glass harmonica, now do we? Let's go back and let's go back to common instruments. I want to add a flute and I want to add a uh, uh, bass clarinet. So how I added that was I just double click the name here and it goes to the right. Or if I add soprano saxophone, you just hit add to score. And it, it adds it. Let's say we want the soprano saxophone uh, to be at the top of the score because right now it's at the bottom. Let's click on soprano saxophone and hit move up. And there we go. So score order is now going to be soprano saxophone, flute, and bass clarinet. Um, or if I want the flute up, I just click on the flute and hit up. Now if you add instruments, uh, Sibelius will automatically uh, arrange them in score order. So if I added violins, so let's add a violin, it'll go to the bottom because that's the standard score order. So you see it's at the bottom. If I added a piccolo, it would go to the top, as you can see there. So score order, uh, if you don't know, don't know what that is, uh, watch more videos on my channel. Let us hit OK. We're ready to go. So as you see, all the instruments are now updated on this preview here. We can choose our time signature. I'll keep it. I'll keep it four four. If you scroll down more, you got this pickup bar. Uh, we don't need a pickup bar in this beginner video, so let's avoid that. Tempo text. We can just choose a preset. Uh, Allegro, metronome mark. We don't have to add this, uh, but we can put one twenty. And if we go down, we can choose our key signature. And there are major sharp keys by default. You can do major flat keys, minor sharp keys, and minor flat keys. Let's do uh, D minor, and then we can title it. So I'm gonna call it uh, my song. No, my epic song. That's that's a little bit better. We can put our name in there, and then we can do copyright 2020. I'm not gonna copyright this though. Hit create, and it's gonna make our score. And it went to my second monitor. There it is. Okay, so epic song. Uh, if you want to know how I did this wood background, by the way. What you could do is you could go to file up here. You can go to preferences and then a window will pop up like this and you go to, oh, you go to textures and then you can choose your desk texture. There's a ton of different ones here, but this uh, wood white oak one is the one I like and I keep the, the paper texture just a white color just so it's simple. So the first tip we're going to be going over is adding text. Um, so let us do that. Let's click on this title here. Uh, we, we created my epic song from the, the start menu. But let's say that this wasn't here or the composer name. What I could do is I can just go to the top here where it says text in the ribbon. I can go to this little drop down thing. There's a little arrow. Click the arrow and you have a ton of different text options. So let's just find title. We can click it. Now my, my mouse turns blue. So that means I have to click down to, to place it. So I just click down. It places a uh, little text thing right here, and I can type my title here or whatever. Let's click out to deselect, and we are ready to go. Uh, if I want to, I'll show you how to how to operate around Sibelius because that's pretty important too. So I'm scrolling up and down, obviously to 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 scroll. If I want to pan around, I can just hold my left click, and it will like grab it and like scrub around, which is really useful. Uh, you can sc also scroll in by uh, doing Command and then Scroll Wheel. That's how I zoom. So command or control, and then use your scroll wheel. Uh, if you have a MX Master mouse like me, you can do the the, th the side scroll with your uh, thumb thumb wheel thing. Yeah. Let us add a composer name. So what if I want to add a name right here? 
There's another way of adding text actually. What you could do is just right click in the empty white space and a menu is gonna pop up. And then text is down here, a little drop down, and then there's more stuff here. So let's select composer. And then my, my cursor is blue again, so I have to click down and it automatically will put it on the right side. And we can put in our name here. Perfect, and we uh, just click out of it to, to, to permanently place it, and we're good to go. What if I want to bold my text or change the font or change the, the text size? Uh, so what I would do is I would click on my title or whatever text element you have, and then at the top here in the text ribbon area, you have this formatting options section, and I can change the size of it right here easily. I can change the style, so I'm gonna bold it because I like bolding my titles and we're good to go. I can change the font if I wanted to up here. Uh, but there's an, a more advanced tip that you should know about actually. So let's say we'll have multiple titles, like it's a multi-movement piece. It's like a, some kind of a symphony or something. So we're gonna add another uh, title element, uh, maybe in the middle of the page. If we simply add another title, it's not gonna keep all the formatting we just made. So if I, if I click down here, or it's gonna appear up there, but if I type title two, title number two, it's not gonna be bolded or that, that bigger size. So what we have to do is we have to kind of set the preset of all the, the title text. So when we place a, an element that says title, it'll automatically be the size and font we want. So to do that, you would have to click on your a title element, for example, and then in the text ribbon, you see styles, click this little arrow, and then this menu pops up and make sure we're on title right here. <laughs> You have to hit edit, a lot of steps here. Another window shows up, and now these are all the presets that you can choose. So for all the title text that I placed down, I want them all to be bold, okay? And I want the size and the score to be size 25. Oh, I disabled the style. There it is. So hit bold. If we automatic, if, if we click okay and close, now if we add another title element, like right here, we'll say, title two. I didn't set the size properly, but now it's bolded. So all the text now will be bolded. So that's how you would do that. And you, it works with all this tempo stuff. So you can set all the, uh, the tempo text to be um, like Comic Sans or something. In fact, I want to try that. Let's click on it, hit styles, edit. Uh, yeah, edit, we're on tempo. And then we can choose the font right here and just do Comic Sans. Let's find it right here. Oh, there it is. Hit Comic Sans, hit OK. So now it changes, hit Close. So all of the, the tempo that I add from now on, so if I find tempo in this drop down menu right here, it updated automatically in the preview. Let's click down. We can right click for more options, actually. It's contextual to what you're doing. We'll hit Moderato. Now it's automatically going to be Comic Sans because we changed the preset. And of course, if, if you're only going to have one title, you can just change everything from this little menu right here. It's, it's a lot easier. So if we do like papyrus or something, it changes it and we can easily change the size in this text ribbon thing. But if we're gonna add multiple elements, I recommend doing the, the styles and then edit feature to make sure that all the presets from there on out are, are the right ones you want. So that was a little advanced, but I'm glad we, we got it through because I didn't learn about this tip until probably a year after I discovered Sibelius. Okay, the next part with this text little category we're talking about is adding expression and technique text. So if you're at the top here in the, the text menu, you'll see expression, let's do that first. So expression text is like all the the dynamics, uh, crescendi, d diminuendos and stuff. So if we click on expression up here, our mouse will turn blue, that means we have to place it. So let's put it at the bottom here, click, and your uh, the, the cursor is gonna start blinking, or it should have, let me try it again, there it is. Uh, so what we can do is we can type our tempo so if I type MP, it starts typing, but you might be wondering, that doesn't look right. Why isn't it like fancy and bolded? Well, because you have to hold command while you do that, because I don't know why, it's just it's just a thing. So now we have mezzo piano, so that's pretty cool. That seems pretty stupid though. Let's delete that. What, let's say we wanna just choose from a menu, but you can't. All you have to do is right click. Now all the options are about uh, expression text. So you have all your dynamics here, you have all these instructions here and then some. When your cursor is blinking like this, you just right click and then contextual options show up based on what you were doing. So we can choose piano. We can move piano around anywhere. Like Sibelius, you can move anything anywhere. It's kind of fun. 
like everything is like is able to be moved in some weird odd fashion like that so if you want to mess around with your score you can because it's it's a really good time I'm just gonna control Z that and go back blah 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 great now technique text works similar so let's place down technique text right here or whatever I can move it I can right click and more options show up and they're, they're contextual so now they're all about you know Arco about uh, solo and uh, mutes so if I do mute it's just regular a regular like uh, what is this Palatino text and then you know I can place it anywhere uh, but it doesn't have to be from that menu if it's very specific like you can tell the players to hum so just type hum and then you can place it wherever you want on whatever beat you want or anything like that that's pretty much it for text for this beginners video if you want me to cover a second tutorial on adding like lyric text I can add like chord diagrams I can add like Roman numerals all that good stuff uh, more advanced features for text because there's so much so many things to go over like rehearsal marks and all that so if you want another tutorial leave a like down below so I know to make one for the advanced Sibelius users that are watching this Cool. So the next thing I want to cover is adding lines and symbols. So if we go to the notations menu in the ribbon, you'll see this lines category right here. All of these are the lines that we can add to our score. So there are things like slurs, crescendo, decrescendo, trill, glissando, retardando, all that stuff. And then pedaling. All this stuff is called lines. And we can simply click on like crescendo. Our mouse turns blue. All we have to do is just place it wherever we want and it places it. Let's say we want to make it bigger. Let's click on the crescendo near the end of it. And now this little blue node shows up. All we have to do is just drag it out. Yeah. Little lobsy loosey. So all we have to do is hold shift and that locks it on that axis, that horizontal axis, so it doesn't move. And uh, similar programs in like the Adobe Suite, you hold shift and uh, to make sure things are not moving around. So we lock them in place. Very useful tip, hold shift. And when I, for example, if I move this Allegro thing around, what if I just want to move it on the Y axis? I do is I just hold shift and now it stays there for the most part. Let's bring it back down. Cool. Now, another useful feature will be adding slurs. I'll show you how to add these to notes because right now there's no notes and it makes it very difficult and it's red. It's telling me that this is not good. So let me delete that. We can also add symbols the same way. So in this menu, there's multiple, multiple, multiple. <laughs> random symbols that you'll never use but they're there so you can take a little stroll in there but you know adding segnos and codas those are pretty common so you just click on them and then your mouse turns blue and then you just place them anywhere you want if you don't like where it is you can move it anywhere on the score just by holding it down now i want to get into our next tip which is using note input and there's different types of note input so it's how we add notes to our score there's there's multiple ways um, three that I can think of right now uh, but an easy way of doing that for me and this is my preferred method I mean other composers have different methods this is mine for right now I might change it I just use my computer keyboard to input notes you can also plug in a MIDI keyboard like this one into Sibelius and it you can just hit a note and it'll show up on the score that can be very useful I personally just don't use it it's just a little too much to to multitask between controlling this and controlling this at the same time so I, I just use the keyboard so how I use the keyboard is you basically just hit N and now a note head shows up with a little stem and it's kind of like it's a little faded so that this is where it's gonna be placed if we click the left click so if I want to put a, a B flat right here I just click on the B flat line and it's there it goes to the next one if I want to add an F I hit the F and it's really simple like that. Uh, let's say I want to make the make a little triad out of this B flat here. So, I, what if I what if I just click on this B flat again? I can hit the D, I can hit the F. Now they stack on top of each other. What if I want to add a C right here? Uh oh, it deleted it. So what you have to make sure is you're selected on the beat that you want to edit. So if I want to add a, a C on, on beat one here on the flute. I have to make sure I use my uh, left arrows to, to move over to the next notes. And now that it's turned blue, it, the beat is selected. So now I can add extensions and other notes there. So uh, again, a, a pro tip is to use your left and right arrows to move to the next beat pretty much, or the next element in your score. If you do the up arrow, it's actually gonna change the note uh, pitch up or down using the arrows. 
but moving them left and right, it just moves to the next beat. So that's a little quirky thing you have to get used to. I was going to show you how to use slurs though, so let me add a few notes. So I'll do a, a C, A, F, G, and then an A. I don't, I don't, those are just random, don't judge me. So if I want to add a slur, let's click on the first note. We're going to hit S on our keyboard, and S stands for slur, obviously, so that's a little shortcut that's super useful. Now if I want to get the slur to go on all these notes, I can take this little node right here and just drag it to whatever note I want it to end on. That's one way of doing it. Let me hit Control Z and go back. Or an easier way is once you hit slur or S, you can hit the space bar and it automatically will go to the next note, which is super useful. I use this all the time. I recommend using it yourself. So just hit space bar after you hit the S button and then the slur will just, you know, go on to the next note perfectly to delete because we don't want that. Another good shortcut for your keyboard is doing H. H stands for uh, H stands for crescendo, right? So we can hold shift to lock it on the horizontal axis. If we do shift H, it adds a decrescendo or diminuendo or whatever your, your, your school of thought is on that term. We can add a decrescendo. We can add a slur after that. If I not hit A, I mean to hit S and then we can hit spacebar to go to the next one. So getting used to all these little shortcuts is super useful and I'll be covering even more throughout this tutorial. So adding notes, you can either hit N like I just showed you, it creates a little thing right there and you can add notes by clicking with your mouse. The second way you can do that is simply hitting the note name on your keyboard. So if, I, if I'm on beat two right here and I hit A, it creates an A. If I don't like that, I can go to the next octave. I can either do that by holding it and bringing it all the way up. I can use the arrow keys to move it up. Or to go to the next octave is a little shortcut. What you can do, not that, is hold command or control and then your left, uh, your top or down arrow. So top arrow moves it up the octave and then the down arrow moves it down the octave. And I have to hold control while I do that. So that's a super useful one too. I can also select multiple notes by holding shift and then clicking a selection here, just like any other program. If I click on just the empty space in a measure, it'll select the whole measure. If I want to select the first two beats right here, I can just click on the first one, hold shift and click the next one, and then it selects it all. So what can I do with this selection? I can easily just copy it, control C, and paste it over here. And, it, and it's just like any other program, just copies and pastes notes, which is really cool. If I shift select all this stuff, and maybe this piano thing right there, and I put that down here, copy and paste, it copies all the, the expressive elements, all the dynamics, the lines, all the notes and instructions too. So copy and pasting is super useful. If I want to just copy, uh, if I just want to replicate or duplicate an element, I can select these two beats right here and hit R on my keyboard. If I keep on hitting R, it just, it just duplicates whatever I selected. I can do that with a single beat right here. So beat four, I just click on beat four and hit R and there I go. If I want to replicate or duplicate the entire four measures right here, I just let me shift select all of it and I zoom out. If I hit R, it's just going to copy it and duplicate it to the next four, just like that. So it can, I can do stuff really, really fast by using R. So that's like duplicating things. I can do that with anything pretty much. I can do it multiple measures like this. Just hit R and it works perfectly. So I'm going to show you how to change the note values. So let's say I want to make this uh, right here a, um, a half note. So a cool thing you can do in Sibelius, go to view at the top and then keypad should be selected. If I click it again, yes, here's the keypad. The keypad allows you to do so many different things. There's a ton of different menus up here. Let's stay on the first one here. So if you click on beat one, you'll see that we're on quarter note. If I go and move my mouse and hit the half note, this now becomes a half note. And then if I click on beat three here, I can make this a half note by clicking there. If I want to make this A a whole note, I just hit whole note and so on and so on. The slur is kind of messed up, so I would just delete it. Another shortcut for doing note values is using your keypad. So your keypad will correspond to all of these things. So right here, this natural sign will be a seven on your keypad. Um, but unfortunately, my computer doesn't have a keypad because it's a MacBook. So what I do is I go us and change my my uh, keyboard input in Sibelius to uh, like a laptop like con control setting. Instead of using a keypad to do all this, I just use my number row on the top. How I would do it is go to note input and then note input again down here. You see this little arrow. Let's click on that. 
another menu will show up. Uh, for me, it is on my second screen. There it is. And now we can go up to keyboard shortcuts. And now you will see up here, current feature set. If you're using a computer that doesn't have a, a keyboard keypad, you can just choose laptop or uh, notebook laptop shortcuts. By default, it'll be on standard menus. If you do have a, a big you know, keyboard with a keypad, then ignore what I'm saying right now because it, that'll be default. Um, but yeah, if you have Sibelius on a, uh, a fresh computer, like a laptop that doesn't have a keypad, make sure you change that setting. So what I can do, instead of like hitting seven on my uh, keypad to get this natural sign, for me on my keyboard, I would hit seven on the number row. And if I wanna make this a chord note, I would have to hit four on the number row. So it's a little bit different. You might have to get used to it. Um, if I want to make it a, a, a dotted quarter, I can hit the period and it creates that. So you can map everything in keyboard shortcuts to do whatever you want, but I, I just use the default pretty much. If I want to click on this eighth rest here and I can hit N to input something, I'll just put a B flat there. I can use R to just add a quick beat, make this a, a four right here so that becomes a quarter note. I can also make it a half note by hitting five. Uh, I can hit two, make it a 16th note. I can hit R multiple times to just duplicate it. And then I'm using my arrow keys to move it up and down. And all of this comes with a lot of practice, a lot of tinkering. So just by watching me, it's obviously a little confusing that I can do some of this stuff really fast. I can shift the octave, um, stuff like that. I can copy it. I can put it on the instrument below, shift the octave. Uh, another cool thing you can do is by doing shift and then an interval number. So like shift five will create a perfect fifth based on whatever notes you are selected on. Make sure you're holding shift and then I do five. Now it creates notes a fifth up. Now these are parallel fifths up here. So if I play it, whoa, that's pretty cool. I'll show you how to do, how to do playback and stuff in one second, um, but let's make this a uh, half note here. Uh, okay. So if I click on this F natural here, if I want to make this like a perfect third, what I would do is just click on it and do shift three. And this is for the laptop like feature set. I don't know if it's the same with the uh, keyboard, uh, key, uh, the keypad one. Uh, it's been a while. I used to have a actual mechanical keyboard, but it's been a while. So I don't remember if you have to hold shift or not, but that's something that to play around with. Okay. But if you have the laptop feature set, like I do, I just do shift three and creates the interval above it. Perfect. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I play my music? There's multiple ways, like all things in Sibelius. Let's go to this play menu at the top here. You'll see all these playback controls right here. What you can do is, let's go to the beginning by clicking this one, and then we can hit play, and all of our music will magically play. Very contemporary, and look, they're humming all this. It's beautiful. I love this. It's so good. All the Comic Sans, the Papyrus. Ooh, so good. Let's figure out another way of playing our music. So what I love using for a shortcut is Y. Now, if I click on this beat right here and hit Y, the playback bar, the green one, automatically goes to whatever note I was on. So if we click right here and hit Y, and I hit space bar, which is also play, it automatically plays, automatically plays uh, what beat I want. So if I just hit play, like some, if I want to like click this note and I want to play it from this note, I have to hit Y unless I just hit spacebar. It'll just completely, completely ignore me. So I have to hit Y to go to the beat that I want to, to start on. Now mo for most of the stuff, you'll just want to start from the beginning. So you can either click this, uh, this back button right here, or you can just go to the first beat, just hit Y. You can hit Y on any note and it'll go to that beat. If I want to play a selection, like only one instrument line, not the entire thing, I have to make sure I select the instrument. It doesn't have to be the entire, like I don't have to do shift select for the everything. It just has to be like well, even one beat. And then if I hit play, it basically plays just the bass clarinet part. So I don't have to worry about selecting everything in the entire score for it to, to play it. I just had to have something selected in blue for it to, to solo out that instrument and mute everything else. Um, you can, again, you can play your music by hitting spacebar. You can also hit P on your keyboard. And the P will automatically move back to, to the first selection. So if I click on this G right here, and then I can hit P, it'll automatically play from there. 
so I don't have to hit Y. So it's a little, it's a little fidgety. You know, you have to, you have to play with it. It's so is super weird. But after two years of using it, I think I've gotten used to it just a little bit. I'm still learning things every day too. All right, this is pretty good. Uh, there's a cool feature in Sibelius. You know how we have this keypad? We can add another menu that'll give us a ton of playback things. So if we go to view at the top here, we can go on to transport. Now transport is basically a playback menu that you can choose uh, what to, when to play it. You can choose the speed right here, or the tempo. You can choose uh, when to stop, all that stuff. So if I just grab this, uh, if I just scrub around, the playback bar will move with it. I can hit play and it'll play from there. So there's my music, yep. So it's up to you, whatever, whatever method you want to use for playback. I, for the most part, don't even use the transport anymore. It has a nice like uh, timestamp thing, but I don't, I don't really need that right now. What I do is I just click on the note, hit Y, my thing automatically goes there. I can also hit P and then it'll play wherever I've selected. So it goes back to there. So that's all fine and dandy. You might be wondering, why does my Sibelius sound a little more realistic than yours probably? That's because I use Note Performer. Now Note Performer is an AI based playback engine that allows me to play music in Sibelius super realistically. And it is not free. I'll remind you, it's not free. It's like $10 a month, but it's the best thing that you can ever do if you're really serious about composing music, especially in Sibelius or Finale. Uh, downloading Note Performer and subscribing to it is extremely valuable and it's it's fantastic. It sounds amazing and it, it does everything that you want it to and it sounds like actual players. Uh, I'll, I'll leave links down below if you want to try out Note Performer. You can, there's like a, I believe a 30 day trial. Yeah, by default, you'll probably be on general MIDI right here. Now, if I play my music, it's a little bit faster, but it doesn't sound good. You know, you might be into that, but I'm not. So I'm going to go to configuration and hit note performer. Because note performer, if you hear it now, it's completely different. It's, yeah, the music's not great, but, you know, the playback is. Yeah, note performer, I 100% I recommend. But if you're just starting out composing, I would recommend MuseScore, uh, Flat.io. Um, there's other ones too. There's probably like Note Flight. Uh, but Sibelius, I would do that once you're a little bit more. Uh, advanced in in your career in the career of composing in the path of composing uh, I didn't start with Sibelius at all actually I think I did start with I start, started with flat.io which is like a cloud-based um, online uh, notation software then I moved to MuseScore which is completely free and it's fantastic um, but once I needed to like fine-tune my notation I started using Sibelius because it's super powerful and I've gotten used to it and I love it so much Sibelius is great, and once you once you get the the basics of Sibelius and use it every day, you'll get super fast at, at doing everything. Uh, and now there's really no hurdles for me. Like I don't know, there's not there's not been a moment recently where I was like, oh, where is this uh, specific icon, this menu? Where's the menu with all the the, the text I need? Where's the copyright thing? You know, where's the uh, where's the the gliss line? You know, I know where it all is because I've been using it for almost probably over two years actually so once you get used to Sibelius and all of its quirks and features then I'm sure you'll you'll love it so the last thing I want to show you today is how to export your beautiful music so what you could do is you go to file up here and then you hit export and you can export your audio right here you can do a video actually which is kind of cool uh, you can do a PDF all that cool stuff you can export it as a MIDI uh, you hit score only, which is, we're just doing a score right now. You can rename it and it'll save wherever you want it to. Just like any other program, it's pretty easy. Um, but what I want to, what I wanted to add on is there's a million other important things to know about Sibelius. I just don't want to cover it all. This would be like a two hour video. If I went over like how to use the parts feature, like how to get this, obviously there's nothing in the piccolo part, but one second. Sorry about that guys. My neighbor just knocked on the door and gave me some free salsa. So you know what? It's good to have good neighbors, right? Yes, I was gonna say, there's there's features that you can you can learn about, like doing parts, how to um, add different kinds of. There's new text you can do. You can do lyrics. You can add rehearsal marks like this. 
I want to cover that all in good detail. I just don't want to rush it because Sibelius is just a monster of a program and I want to cover it very, very specifically. So if you would like that and you want a more advanced tutorial, go ahead and leave a like down below to let me know that uh, this content is useful. And uh, yeah, today is just pretty much a beginner's tutorial for first time users in Sibelius, you know, how, how the transition is. Um, if you want me to cover a video on MuseScore, because I've used MuseScore for like two years too. So I can cover all that. Sibelius is just my personal favorite. So I've just been using it for all my professional work. I've created some beautiful scores in Sibelius. The notation power in Sibelius is just second to none. And I can pretty much make my scores look beautiful and professional, like someone published it. So I guess what I could do is I could show you some of my big works and how, how it looks in Sibelius. Because right now this is just a mess. You, <laughs> your music will, will not look this terrible. So I'm opening up this piece right here. I won this piece. This is the first competition I ever won. That's how I got I, I got this MacBook Pro actually. The money I used, uh, the money I won from this competition, I bought my first computer, really so. Or I bought my first own computer. So this is my score, it's called A Seafarer's Fanfare. It's one of my favorites. Um, unfortunately, the premiere was canceled because of COVID, and it was supposed to be an orchestra hall in Minneapolis, but alas, it was canceled, and I'm so sad. But the music is very pretty, and it's for youth com youth uh, musicians. It's a youth orchestra piece, so it's a little bit easier, but, you know, it, it's very nice. So this is what a, a big, you know, finished score looks like. If I s zoom in here, you can see just how cool it looks. You can do all of this and more. If you want me to do a second tutorial on Sibelius, maybe you too one day can learn how to write scores such as this. I'm not saying I'm the best at it, but I am pretty good at writing stuff in Sibelius now. If you want me to show you how to, to compose, you can also leave a like down below. So I'm just going to play this little selection here. Nice and blended. Now let's play the whole thing because why not? Oh, I actually have the score in my dr my desk here. This is the printed score. It's it's chugging right now. I don't know why. But that's the score. Very good stuff. So it's a little fidgety right now because the notation I messed up. If you want me to show you how to like add cool like note heads like this, that's for another tutorial. Um, the playback makes it really weird though. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this beginner's tutorial. I'll make a second one if I get many a like on this video. Um, but yeah, you know how to do that. Uh, and subscribe if you want more content on how to become a better composer, a more productive musician really in general. And uh, I try to bring composing tips and productivity under the same roof. You know the drill. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Alright guys, keep writing. Bye-bye.